started with, uh, if you can introduce yourself, that'd be great. I will. Yeah. Hi, my name is Richard O'Neill. I'm a storyteller and author, and I work in education. I work in criminal justice. I work in organizations, whether they're not for profit or for profit. So pretty much anywhere they want story to help them with their communication, uh, then I, I'm, I'm the person they ask. Okay, interesting. So you're dealing with quite different um, environments and quite different, would you say, what kind of word do you use? Do you use audience or students? How do you talk about them? That's really interesting. I think they're, they're, they're my clients. They're all okay. my clients. I, I work with them. Um, so whether that's in school, it, it, it doesn't matter if it's a three-year-old child, I still, I still see them as my client. I want to yeah, give them okay. the absolute best of my experience. Right. And for me, storytelling is, you know, people will say sometimes, well, um, how can you go from working with three-year-olds to working with 15-year-olds who have got, you know, some quite serious issues, perhaps, sure. in terms of sure. behavior? And then how can you then go to work with seven-year-olds and then go and work the next day in prisons? Right. And for me, it's, it's all about story. It's all about communication. It is so, story is so flexible because it allows you to adjust it. You know, whether right. you're working with a three-year-old or you're working with somebody who's in a prison, uh, you know, wh wherever you are, whatever you're doing, if you're working in a business situation, because for me, storytelling is the beating heart of communication. It doesn't Good, matter yeah, what okay. you've got, that's, storytelling is it. You yeah. know, if we had no phones, if we had no books, if we had nothing else, we would all revert back to it. Yeah. And when people are social, obviously at the moment people aren't being as social as, as they used to be, but in cafes, in bars or whatever, people do not get PowerPoints out and show them to people. Yeah. They yeah. tell stories about themselves and about their lives. And yeah. for me, I think one of the things that we used to do going back hundreds and hundreds of years ago, before we had job titles and business cards and websites to rely on we had to very quickly tell people who and what we were yeah because otherwise they might see us as an enemy rather than a friend yeah so being able to communicate and to communicate effectively with anyone fairly quickly is a massively important skill yeah. you know in, in the north of england where i am at the moment they used to have this this old saying that you had to be able to give a good account of yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's so right. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and there's a lot of there's a lot of lessons in that and a lot of links to being accountable, having mm -hmm. accountability, you know, uh, modern parlance, putting yourself out in the world. Well, it's no good putting yourself out in the world unless you're going to put your best self out in the world. Yeah. And the way to do that, whether you're doing it as I'm doing it now via this phone or you're doing it um, online. You're doing it through books. However you're doing it, you want to give the best account of yourself. And yeah. if you understand how story works and you get to enjoy playing with it, because here's the thing they won't tell you. Storytelling, literacy, writing, whatever you want to call it, wherever I work, all it is is playing with words. Yeah, good. That's yeah. all it is. Yeah. Okay? We've taken the fun out of it very often in school because we can't have fun with words anymore. We can't yeah. see the, the fun, the silliness, the amazingness of putting three or four words together in a certain way, which, wow, leaps out from the page. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's not fair. No. As I said, I, I, mean, live in, I live in the north of England and we still use dialect words. Yeah, of course, yeah. Words. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, some people in education would call those dialect words slang, you know, yeah, that they're written sure. off as useless. Actually, they're not. Dialect and slang is very, very different. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Dialect is old language. Slang is like in it, just made up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, di dialect, dialect is dialect is an, in, an integral part of a person's identity in a lot of cases, right? I mean, your dialect is what grounds you to the place you come from, the community you're a member of, the people that you can communicate directly with without having to modify your language, right? When somebody steps outside of their origin and they're forced to not use their dialect, either by some prescriptive force or just 
for the sake of communication, uh, it can be quite unsettling for a person, right? To have to speak without the without access to their normal dialect. They're, they're leaving a part of their identity behind. Absolutely, and storytelling allows you to be much more flexible with your language. Yeah. So it's a flexible thing. So you're not fixed to one code and then yeah. you have to switch to another code. What storytelling does amazingly well, and what I teach my students is, storytelling helps you to find connections. Sure. Good. We're always trying to do, you know, for example, somebody from the business world might see me and have a chat and go, I can't see how storytelling could help my steel business. Yeah. Well, don't get it. And then immediately, boom, 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 boom. Here's the connection because you need to be able to do this. You need to be able to do that. You need to be able to do that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I get it. Yeah. We're, we're always trying to make connections with other people. Um, and, and, that, and that's what storytelling allows us to do. It's, yeah. it's the most wonderful skill. And once you've learned it, it's pretty much like growing your own vegetables. It's free. Yeah, right. You know? Um, so this is puts me this of, of the conversations i've had so far i suspect that this will be the conversation uh that happens on the most different levels because there's so many different ways that i that i think about storytelling and i'm sure uh you do even more so um so i want to i want to approach a few different kind of layers of this conversation um and get your get your take on some of them um i'm interested in some of the specific professional activities that you've uh, that you that you're engaged in um, like you just referred to how storytelling works in a business context and what value it provides I want to I want to talk about some of those ideas and the prison context okay. and the, the schools um, also um, something I was watching one of your videos just yesterday um, you I, uh, so obviously you and I first connected on LinkedIn and I've seen a few of your kind of short three four minute videos on there um, and recently you, you had a video where you were talking about, um, I forget the detail now, but the, a girl who went, something about a girl working in a shop, I think it was. Um, but the, the, the thing that was interesting to me was how you use the word story. Um, it was something that I was familiar with because I, I don't think I explicitly use it this way, but I, I think about stories this way. Um, so I wonder, to, to what extent for you, because you're so embroiled in the storytelling uh, context, is every conversation, is, do, does storytelling mean, you know, it means more than a narrative? Uh, I heard you talked about this uh, girl um, having an interaction with a customer, I think it was, and you referred to that as a story. So sto I mean, to, to what extent do you think of any sequence of events any conversation, any interaction. Are these all versions of stories in your mind? I, I think they are. I think they are. That, that, that's, that's, my, that's, my, that's my belief because um, I think we, we look for, in business education, we've gone very linear. So we have to start at the start and get to the end as quickly as possible, get a few medals on the way. There's a certificate. Well done. Hurrah. Whereas in storytelling, we're, we're more about the human connection. So right. we're trying to be very circular. And in, in a business context, I am saying that a conversation with a customer is a story. Right. And it, it will beget a story because that person will walk away from that interaction and tell someone else. Yeah. And because it, and because it made them feel good, this is the difference. Storytelling makes you feel a lot of other communication just gives you the information. Sure. sure. So storytelling connects you. It, it connects with your feelings. So you've had a really good service in a shop or wherever that may be. You go to somewhere and because you want to communicate with other people and tell them about your day, your world, whatever, then you go, oh, you know, guess what? I was in the shop today and this person, she was so lovely and she gave me this. You go, what an advert. Stories, stories, adverts on TV. They used to be, hey, Bob's beans are better than anybody else's beans. <laughs> yeah. and they're only, right. you know, 39 cents a can. Yeah. But no, they show you the family now. Yeah. And they tell you about the really positive impact Bob's beans has on bringing the family together. But they show yeah. you. And even the story of the bean, right? The bean has its own story as it moves from the field. Correct. To the, right. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. We so get wonder... to find 
Go on. No, go, go ahead. Go ahead. You know, I, was, I was going to talk about, you've got me going, so I was going to talk about the origin of Bob's bean, you know? Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. An individual bean born in a exactly, field yeah, somewhere. Exactly. I and remember and I the get... first time I really noticed that, um, I, I forget the name now. I wonder if they're still available. It was back when I lived in, in the UK. I used to buy it. There was a smoothie. Innocent smoothies, I think. Yes. Uh, yes. That, that was the first time I think I ever noticed this being done yep. in uh, quite to this extent, where every the, it it really told a narrative story of the yep. fruits and how they, you know, these friendly, yep. lovely fruits. Um, and that yep. I, that at the time was quite peculiar to that one brand, yep. I think. And now it seems to be yep. very widespread. I believe they ended up making it so big, the company, that they sold it to Coca Cola. I think. Oh wow! Wow. Well, there's a story. Um, <laughs> now, there's a story, but you see, story adds value. And there's, there Go was on. a wonderful, I don't know if you saw it on LinkedIn, but I put it on a while ago. There was this wonderful study they did about 10 years ago. And I, I, I'll, I'll just sort of shorten it. But they, they took some items, just random items that they bought off eBay for like, uh, you know, a couple of dollars or half a dollar or a pound or whatever it was. It's still like a plastic horse's head. You know, right. and they bought it for so like a pound, and then they got writers to write stories about these things to give them this beautiful story, and you know they, they got ten times more. Right, it was a story. Now yeah. some of my work is in museums, and years ago in museums, people used to walk around, you know, in a uniform and say, "This is the shoe from whatever." This is this. But now they walk around and they bring those exhibits to life. Right. And I, I spend some of my time working with museums, right, okay. creating stories for inanimate objects. Yeah, right, right. And even sometimes in certain museums, I don't know if it's still in one of them, an, a, a museum in Manchester, um, one of the exhibits had my voice. So um, telling, the sto telling my story okay. as the exhibit. <clears throat> okay, well. Children, brings it to life you know yeah um, yeah absolutely and i think in business terms we're talking about not only communication out of the business but we're talking about communication within mm -hmm. you know here's here's a simple simple explanation i think um so i work in a company and it's a very linear and hierarchical structure so in my department i've come up with a great idea you know, so I want to be able to go and tell somebody that, but I can't go and see the woman or the man in charge. It's got to go all the way up the right. system and then back down again. Storytelling teaches you how to be circular. It gets you to think in a much more circular way. Storytelling generally has a start, a middle, and an end. It takes you on a little journey and brings you back. And oh, that was mm -hmm. nice. It might have been a magical mystery tour, but it was still nice. Yeah. You come yeah. safe from that. Yeah. And that's when I'm teaching my people in organizations storytelling skills, same as in school, I'm teaching them to take people on a journey. Yeah. And why yeah. would you not want to go on a lovely journey? Yeah. You know, yeah. this, this yeah. is storytelling is deep in our psyche. I think it was Angela, um, who was it? Who was it? Um, who was that? I was trying to think who it was actually, Angela Mayer, who said that um, there have been um, amazing, um, groups of people that have been amazing um, places around the world that have had a um, story and there have been amazing places that have had the wheel but there have been no uh, of uh, none of these places actually um, with the wheel I, I'm, I'm getting this all the wrong way around so I'm not doing a very good advert um, what we're saying is that there, there have been civilizations without the wheel but none without story yeah right. right oh yeah of course yeah yeah sure. so now sure. what i've just demonstrated to you there I'm not on purpose i'm not that good what i'm always teaching people is it's okay to make mistakes very often what people do is to say i've got a presentation to make okay and i i'm going to concentrate on it and concentrate and rehearse it and rehearse it yeah. and rehearse it yeah. so actually you rehearse all the life out of it absolutely you might yeah. be perfect but there's no yeah. feeling yeah yeah, yeah? Now, what I teach the people I work with, whether it's children, and when I make videos, you'll have seen them on LinkedIn, I do a one take and I don't cut anything out. Right. 
as long as it's not a you know a, a, a stupid mistake that you know it's like dead air for three minutes sure but yeah. if there's sure. a mistake i want to show people like it's just happened here mm -hmm. everyone makes mistakes and when you're in front of an audience people get that it yeah. actually works yeah. in your favor providing it doesn't go on too long it works in your favor because yeah. their heart their yeah. feelings go out to you yeah and it's a good thing yeah yeah, get them so, excited if they know it's authentic, right? I mean, we've all seen you. You mentioned adverts already, and while there are these adverts that use story in their in their presentation, there's also yes. a sense to those where they feel very inauthentic because we know that they've been uh, focus grouped and you know they've been yes. they've been written by a, a, a you know some advertising corporation. There's a very big difference between that and an authentic story told from yes. the heart. And we, I think, you know, people can, can tell the difference. And when you're being authentic, um, you know, people get on board with you, right? They get on your side. They appreciate it a lot more, I think. Absolutely. And, you know, and, and as I said, everybody makes mistakes. And what I always say to people is, look, whatever happens, keep going. Yeah. Tell, tell the truth. You made a mistake. You right. can't remember. Right. Happens to me all the time. Okay. So now because I've gone through that and been really honest and authentic with you and said, let me start again. I made a mistake there. Yeah. Then straight back into my brain now comes actually the person who said it was Maya Angelou. Right. So yeah. It, Give yourself yeah. time to think. And yeah. Give yourself time yeah. to think. Storytelling allows you to build trust in yourself. Yeah. Uh, good. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of the things it allows you to do. Okay. You're not having to really, I'm not going, oh, I can't remember that relax do your stuff keep going tell the truth you know i was once in front of a crowd of about 400 people and everything was going great and i'm talking and i'm, I'm in my stride because i like to move around when i'm working and i'm, I'm everything's going great and then boom, blank so i turned to the audience and i said you never know, guess what's just happened i've forgotten what i was going to say next they all laughed they thought it was a joke yeah. uh, but i was telling the truth and actually, because they laughed and because I had that little breathing space, boom, I was back on. Yeah. And also, I mean, you've mentioned circularity a few times. And I think, you know, yes. anybody who's, I think not everybody's aware of this, but any, every, anybody who's kind of studied storytelling or writing on any level will be aware of, uh, for example, you know, the, the, the hero's journey archetype and things yes. like this. The circularity yes. involved there you've brought up a few times and because of that circular nature you also give yourself the opportunity to come back and fill in anything that you've missed without kind of okay i've missed my chance i you know i've gone i've already passed that slide so i've already said that bit of my presentation that moment's yes. gone now when you're telling a story i guess you've got more time to go back and uh fill in gaps you do you do because once you get people on board they will stay with you providing it's interesting and entertaining so it's a case of saying, oh, man, you never get, I forgot to tell you that bit. Do you remember yeah. when I was talking yeah. about Bob or Jeff or Jill? Yeah, I forgot to tell you, Jill has this cat, right? This cat is just an absolute nightmare. I need to tell you about the cat. So yeah. get this picture, it's horrible. And then whiz back. No problem. Yeah. yeah. Circular. Doesn't matter, we can go backwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. That's, that's, that's why I teach my kids to, to write using a, a method I developed called the story roundabout. It okay. doesn't matter where you start, and you can go around as many times as you like. Okay, I like that. That's good. Yeah, so there's no mistakes. You just pass. Yeah, like right. when you're on yeah. in a car, you know, you pass the opening. Oh, you don't think, oh, my life's finished. You just think, oh, I've got to go around going again. Around. <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah. You know? And of course, when uh, you start a story, often the thing that triggers a story, um, especially if you're in a social situation, you're talking to friends and you want to, you know, something comes up and you want to tell a story about something that happened to you, often the trigger the reminder of, oh, this thing that happened to me, the trigger won't be the thing from the start of the story. Often the trigger is perhaps the thing at the end and the story is how you get there. So, you, you know, you might be beginning at the end of a story and go, you know, funny thing happened and then you need to tell kind of how you got there. So you kind of do a bit of a Tarantino job. <laughs> and, and, well, I was going to say, because people, you know, especially with children in school when I'm, I'm teaching them writing or showing them, some of some some of the writing things is that they'll i'll say hey here's a really crazy thing right and the teachers they're thinking what's he going to say next um i said this is going to be really really crazy really radical right are you ready for it yeah 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 how about this i'm going to allow you to start at the end if you want 
Yeah. Well, we can start yeah. at the end. Yeah. yeah. Start in the middle. What? No, mind blowing. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. How many films? Right. Exactly. At the end. Some of the best. Some of the greatest. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So, but it's okay on films. It's okay for us all to watch those films and enjoy it, and then say to our kids, "Oh no, you've got to start on that page there and yeah. work all the way through." Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's just, you know, very, yeah. very strange. Um, yeah, yeah, the, the, it is circular in nature. There's another thing that I think is really important as well, and this comes with um, being good at your craft, developing your craft. And what I always say to people, and you can't see this, so that's the tricky thing. You can't see it. Um, it's not like I've got it off screen somewhere and I can bring it and I can't reach you. Right. You can't right. see it because it's invisible. It's what I call creating a storytelling space. And wherever you are, you can create that space, whether it's on a busy street. I've told stories from market stalls, busy city centers, uh, prisons, as I mentioned. A prison is quite an oppressive place, as you could imagine. Um, you tend to walk through door after door after door and they lock behind you and they're very noisy, echoey, yeah. Yeah. Pinky, clanky, you know, and there's an atmosphere in a prison which you could probably imagine, you know, it's not the yeah. nicest place to be. So, but even in there, you find somewhere and you create that story space. And just for that time you're telling that story, that space is completely different. Right. And it's the same with an interaction with a customer mm -hmm. uh, across the counter. It stops being a busy shop and starts being a story space. Yeah. Wherever yeah. you're telling these stories, it becomes a different space. Yeah. Yeah. No, I get um, that. Yeah. So it's so, so for me that's it, it's all these things that people say. Well, you know, could you put this? We're talking on a video now, obviously, but they say, you know, can you put this on a video? Can you put this in a course? Listen, it's like a wild, it's like a wild bird yeah. storytelling. Yeah. Start yeah. putting it in a cage, and it goes horribly wrong. Yeah. You need, yeah. To, you need to come and fly with a storyteller. Yeah. And learn. And certainly the way that we've referred to stories on this call so far so far. And as I said, this is kind of one of the things I was interested in, in with, with my earlier question. Um, for you, and as I say, I would agree with this, it seems like the story is very much a kind of uh if not spontaneous, although I suspect often spontaneous, but very much a thing of the moment. So whatever that, you know, you've already talked about the storytelling space and the, um, you know, we've talked about triggers for storytelling. Uh, to put it on a video um, is fine, I suppose, but you lose the moment. So whatever, whatever triggered this story for me to tell this story right now is based on the things that are happening to me and the person that I feel I am right now. And if I put this on a video, um, then when you watch it six months from now, the environment has changed, and so the story perhaps is less relatable. Does that does that kind of make yeah. sense to you? Absolutely. Yeah. absolutely, absolutely. Because you know, um, I did I did something um, a few weeks back, a couple of weeks back, and they said, you know, all these presenters, uh, myself, and they said uh, I talked about what I wanted to talk about, and they said um, we're going to put all these on YouTube. Do you want yours on YouTube with all the others? And I said, no, I've done mm. it now. Did that. Yeah. It was great, but I probably won't think the same. Not that it was anything horrible, by the way. But you know, I, I, that's not rep that won't be representative of me six yeah. months down the line. No, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, um, yeah. because that wasn't that wasn't me reading one of my books, which will right. never change. The book's not right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And the stories that I tell that I don't put in books, then they don't change radically. But if I'm talking about where I am in my storytelling practice at that point or education, then six months down the line, it will change. Yeah. It, it'll look dated to me. Yeah, yeah. And I find uh, as a teacher, and uh, when I'm training with, with um, you know, students in, in the room, um, and then recently having been forced online for a few different training events, um, I've done one or two webinars, which I now am very reluctant to do any more of. I do online training sessions, um, but there's a big difference between a training session with a handful of people who are on a live camera, as you and I are now, and I can do this up to maybe five or six people, maybe a, yeah. maybe a bit more than that, um, and a webinar where it's kind of me speaking to a camera that's being watched by maybe 20, 30, 40 people, yeah. but there's no feedback yeah. from them. 
And that feedback is, I, I don't know, 70% of my, of my lesson is actually in the feedback. It's not what I say, it's what, it's what comes back from my students. And I find when I'm speaking to the camera, um, I found it very difficult, for example, to make video lessons that I've, that I've tried to do a few lately. When I'm speaking to just, to just dead air, um, that's not what teaching is to me. And storytelling, you know, the, I think the traditional idea of, or not, I say traditional, I mean, perhaps the, the common assumption is that, you know, the storyteller is a person speaking to an audience, but I suspect that you would disagree with that. I mean, for me, it, it, it's, it's about what's coming back from the audience as much as it is what I have to share with them. I, th I absolutely agree with you. I, I've done two um, live Facebook hour-long storytelling sessions uh, for an organization up in Scotland, and I enjoyed them. Um, but I would say, you know, they were probably 25% as enjoyable yeah. as a live event with people. Yeah. Yeah. Because you never really know where it's going to go with people. Right. And you're getting right. the instant feedback. Exactly. Yeah. You know, constantly a feeding feeding back because as a storyteller i believe you're there for the audience not you right right you're not there to aggrandize yourself you're no. there to give and do justice to that story and yeah. to give those people the best experience of their lives yeah yeah you can right. only do that by constantly being in tune with them right which is and another another circularity involved right there's the the circle of the, the story and then their response yeah. and maybe i change yeah. my story to to feed to meet their response absolutely you know you 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 it's really difficult you're looking at a camera now we're interacting i can see you but on this facebook i'm not yeah. seeing any i'm seeing no. myself no. You know, and I'm like, whoa, you know. Yeah. Um, so what's doing is filming me, so I'm watching yeah. me, watching me. Right. You know? uh, so it, it's it is different, and and I think you know you're working with whether it's adults or children, and if you find something that you've said they are really into, you're going to spend a bit more time on that. Yeah. If you can see that it's actually not connecting, boom, move on. Yeah. 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 yeah exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. Do exactly that. right. Yeah can't see your audience yeah so it's, no. it is it is it, it's it, it, it will never replace i mean at the moment we use it because we have to yes and we will we'll still use it when we have yeah. to and there are some features of it that i'm happy to to incorporate you know yeah. to, to, to keep there are some things that i'm loving about this but very few things yeah yeah exactly exactly so it's like anything else you know it's, it's like we would say when i was a kid growing up in in a nomadic family where we traveled around from place to place in the, you know in, in the old days really um we would always be early adopters of useful technology yeah good you know, useful yeah. we'll have it if it's not useful we can't carry it yeah yeah right you know, yeah our phone is really useful technology yeah but, but technology is not an end in itself it's a means to an end yeah right yeah. And yeah, absolutely. when we aggregate it and turn it into a thing in its own right, it's actually not. It's the yeah, machine. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. You mentioned the your the, your nomadic origins there, um, and I wonder to what extent that storytelling is just inherent in the culture that you come from. I wonder if is this a, is this just a thing that is is a part of your nomadic lifestyle? I mean, you mentioned as well earlier going back a, a couple of hundred years, you know, to, to having to introduce ourselves through, but you can go back thousands and thousands of years and storytelling is the, you know, the, the oral traditions are how culture has been passed on. Um, and, and in the, you know, the nomadic um, cultures in particular, I imagine storytelling must be very much alive in that, in that kind of, that, the sense of the oral tradition must be very alive still. It's really, it's really interesting, isn't it? Because now in schools, um, they, they they often get very excited and say, actually, this is Oresty, isn't it? I was like, right. yeah, it was, but you've got a new word. Um, yeah. for story. And so it's now it's Oresty, um, which is great. Um, but yes, storytelling was everything to nomadic people. Picture the fact that they were mainly illiterate. Right. So how, how else do you store your history? Yeah. How else do you store your your your, your, your stories for entertainment, your wisdom, your knowledge of yeah. certain places where you shouldn't go and certain plants you shouldn't eat and so on and so on. 
how do we know that? Well, we pass it on through story. Yeah. And story is everything to nomadic people. Yeah. And yeah. It, it, technology now, you know, I can talk, I can meet somebody tomorrow from another nomadic group. And I've met people from nomadic groups all over the world, not just my family or extended family. And you can start to talk to them and they can go back 300 years in story. Right, exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, my granddad's, 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 mother's, brother's, sister's, whatever, you know, they used to work in them fields over there before that farm was built and the farm might be yeah, 200 year yeah. old. You know? yeah, so yeah. there are stories that are linked to location too. Yeah. So that, that's yeah. something I was thinking about. I mean, I wonder um, to what extent you're familiar with some of these uh, particular sort of historic, um, historical examples like um storylines in the the, Ab the australian aboriginals for example you know the ley lines of stories and the yeah. the the rain sticks of the native americans and things used as storytelling devices are you familiar with these have you spent time looking at these things it's all of those things because i think when we get together and we had a we had a big gathering last year up in scotland around about this time um called the the bing annie which is the nomadic scottish people's way of saying the big gathering Okay. And people came from all over the world, Canada, New Zealand, all different people. And we all have these things. We all have these things because we need to show and remind ourselves that we are part of the land. Yeah. And it'll yeah. always be natural. So a stick, yeah. the lines in the earth, a carving on something, a planting of a tree to say, we planted yeah. those, yeah. we were here, you know. The naming of roads. Yeah, sure. Yeah, of course. Yeah. The naming of lanes. People will say, why is that called? Why is that field called John Smith's Field? Yeah. Why is this lane called that? These days, with housing estates and roads, we call them after footballers and what have you. <laughs> but in the yeah. old days, you know, yeah. um, they were named after the people who had the most connection to them. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it makes me think as well if you go into a just a family home. If you go into a, a home that's been in the family for several generations, you can walk around and there's like a, there's a chip on the corner of the table or there's a, a scuff on the floor or there are marks in the door and you can ask, you know, oh, what's this? And there's a story from several generations ago of someone who banged their head or stubbed their toe or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's, you know, that's, that's where um, Ruby uh, took her first baseball right. bat. <laughs> exactly uh, right, yeah. Being, uh, when she was meant to be doing it outside. So you're absolutely yeah. right. There, there are there are markers, and I think the markers around our environment, our territory, whatever you want to call it, um, they are the reminders of the people who have been before us. Yeah. And one yeah, of the things right. in traditional indigenous groups, whether they're nomadic or not, is that they remember that they have a memory, they have a group memory. And that's why at the moment, because I'm, I'm probably the oldest one um, in, in my group, is that we are called the story keeper. Right. So okay. I'm, I'm the keeper of the stories till I pass them on to the next generation. Yeah. Because okay. somebody needs to keep them. We yeah. all know them, but somebody needs to be really, really good. And everyone, I bet you, in, their, in a family, even these days, has got someone who has the most photographs. You know? Yeah, right, right, yeah. Paulin keeps all the photographs. Yeah. Jeff keeps yeah. all the photographs. There'll be someone who keeps. Yeah, that's, the keep. that's so true. Yeah, yeah. That's such yeah. a good point. Yeah. So it, it's, it, and, and story, what it does, it binds us all together. Yeah. Because everybody has a story. Every right. place has a story. Everything right. has a story. Right. And what will trying to do with story is just connect to that yeah to connect yeah you know very often i work with all types of people as i said and some of the most enjoyable work i do is with social workers okay and and they're great they get a really bad press you know one thing goes wrong and then every social yeah. worker is terrible and they do the most amazing job that most of us wouldn't do because it's too hard yeah that's right yeah. But they have a vast range of clients these days and they receive training like everybody else. But sometimes their training doesn't really teach them how to communicate right. with so many different people. So storytelling for me is also about helping professionals to build bridges to their clients. 
Yeah. A storage tool. It's a great connecting tool because you can throw it over the most, and even sometimes with conflict resolution, it can be a bridge of hope. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, you know, it's story for me is, well, there's a song, you'd have to look it up, I suppose. Um, and it was, I think it was by a man called John Miles in the 1970s, and it was called Music. And it's just a, a love song that he wrote about music, how much it okay. means to it. You know, music, it goes, music was my first love, it will be my last. Music of the future, music of the past. To live without my music would be impossible to do. And that's how I feel about story. I could yeah, change right, the okay. word. Good. You know, yeah, it, it right. it's yeah. the one thing that will never let me down. It's the one thing that I've always got. Um, it's, yeah, it, it's, it's part of me. I'm like that yeah. seat on the rock. If you snap me open, it would have story. Story through through. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I wonder um, to what extent, based on the, the examples that you've just been giving, uh, obviously you mentioned earlier um, the books that you write. Um, yeah. So I know you do some some reading, some story readings, for example. But most of this conversation has been about the more kind of spontaneous um, storytelling. To what extent or to what kind of percentage is your work um, rooted in fiction, making up stories and fictional storytelling? And how much of it is more about the, the story of people, you know, the, telling the story of, of my life and my events. And is there a gray area in between where maybe, yeah. you know? Of course, there's, there's a buffer zone, because um, I'm a storyteller. So, you know, there, there, is that, uh, there is that buffer zone in the middle. So you've got, you know, the, the, the reality, the fantasy, and sometimes they blur. Um, yeah. But as, as we found out in England with the stories about the king buried in a car park, yeah, yeah. That, was, that was more accurate than history, written down right, history. Right. So I think often story gets a bit, um, shall we say, you know, it gets a bit inflated perhaps over time or a bit added. But I think because it's circular, it often then gets pared down again before it gets too dark. Yeah, right, right, sure. So a story of it, I go, no, nah, nobody's going to believe that. The yeah, the, the edges get knocked off it a little bit, perhaps. Yeah, 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 yeah that's but, interesting. But I think you keep the core of it. Yeah, I think that's interesting. And integrity in the core always stays. Yeah, it's just on the outside. Yeah, you know. Do you think there is such a thing as a as a as a completely true story? Can there be such a thing? Do you are you on board with that, or do you think what what do you reckon? Well, even even evidence can be looked at differently, can't right. it? Right. It's all down. It's all down to interpretation, I think. Yeah, um sure. so yeah i mean truth is it truth is a very odd thing isn't it a true yeah. story you know, right a true yeah story um i think once once anyone takes a narrative and edits it yeah really no longer totally true is it yeah i think that i mean we've all been in a situation where you know you and two friends went to a party or had an event and then a week later you each tell a completely different none of you is lying but the three yes. completely different stories you know so they're all the truth but uh somewhere yeah. in the middle there is, is 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 what really happened and nobody's perhaps got a full grasp of that i mean that, that's really interesting because you know i i, I do some work in, in, like i say in criminal justice and it's really interesting because the police will tell you when they're investigating crime you know the worst thing, the hardest thing to deal with is an eyewitness. Yeah, right, sure. Give, give them a CCTV at any day. Yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah, I bet, yeah. Three or four eyewitnesses. He was a short, tall, wide, slim, yeah. blonde haired woman. You yeah, know? Yeah, 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 right. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. So it, it's, uh, yeah. I heard, heard things recently about the importance of, um, I mean, we're all, I think, if you've watched a courtroom drama, you're familiar with the concept of a leading question. But I yes. realized recently just how, um, how kind of nuanced and fine that problem can be when uh, you know, we've seen interviews where someone asks, what color hat was he wearing? And the person will say, well, green. And it turns out they weren't wearing a hat. But as soon as you ask what color hat they were wearing, they say, well, there must have been a hat. So <laughs> all I need to do is fill in the color, right? Yeah. And it just, well, you wouldn't cool. realize you're asking a leading question, but you're just planting ideas. That's really interesting. That's another, and I think this will probably have to be the, the point that I finished on. Um, 
that is really really interesting because what you do when you're a really good experienced storyteller is you actually leave things out for people to fill in right, themselves interesting. yeah interesting because their imagination is way better you know as the old saying says there are there are much better pictures on radio yeah right because you know you're telling the story you're giving yeah. the description but then they take that so if it's sure. a monster yeah. Person, yeah, I'll give you two pointers. Yeah, but their imagination will take over. So Absolutely. You, so I, I don't like it when you watch a film where you've read the book and in your mind you've created all these pictures, and then you watch the film and you go, "Well, that's not right. That's not what it was in my head." If I can ask you yeah. one last question, this might be yes. a nice one. If you don't, because uh, yes. you just mentioned radio there, and then you use the word picture as a bit of an analogy. Uh, I wonder what your thoughts are on the the old uh, the old proverb. A picture is worth a thousand words. As somebody who deals in storytelling and, and, and who deals in words, what do you think about that? I'd say it depends on the words. Okay. <laughs> but, but that's the good thing. I think um, a picture on its own would, and I, and I think because pictures are relatively new mm. in, in, in our history as a whole, yeah. you know, 160, 50, 60 years, whatever. And I can still remember the thrill of an Instamatic camera mm. uh, in the 70s, which would print out, you know, this is like, whoa. So I still think we have this delight in seeing pictures. But a picture on its own would soon become pretty boring after the initial look. Yeah, right. Sure. Because it doesn't change. Word. I mean, you've already said, you know, you, if yeah. you tell a story six months from now, it's the same story, but there'll be some nuances, some phraseology yeah. that you've changed. The picture's always the picture, right? Yeah, that's Correct. interesting. Yeah. I mean, obviously, both both is best, but I would I sure. would take the word sure. over the picture. Uh, yeah, no, I think I would as well. I've never particularly liked that uh, <laughs> that little idiot. <laughs> All right, so thanks a lot. Uh, it's a pleasure. Yeah, for me uh, as well. Yeah. Uh, I hope we can maybe find the time to do to do it again if you yeah, if well, you don't mind, because uh, there are yeah. some other sides of your of your professional uh, engagement that I'd like to get into as well. Um, but this has been yeah. great. Thanks a lot. Uh, is there yeah. anywhere that people should come and look for you? Anything that people should be uh, finding you? You just do an internet search for Richard O'Neill, the storyteller. I'll crop up in the most Brilliant. odd place. Brilliant. It might All be right. worth out that way. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Thanks a lot, Richard. Speak to you again. Bye now.